In this webcast, we're going to look at a simple proton transfer reaction between phenol and hydroxide. The first thing to do when looking at these reactions is to think about your building block considerations. Notice that other than the atoms shown as part of your, part of your mechanism, nothing else is going to change. In the case of our hydroxide and our phenol, the phenol oxygen, shown here, has an oxygen with two lone pairs and two single bonds coming from it. And after this reaction, it has become an O- minus with one single bond and three lone pairs with a negative charge. Now as we went from our neutral oxygen to our negatively charged oxygen from our phenol to our phenolate, we can look on the other side and look at our hydroxide and our water. We started off with a hydroxide building block with an oxygen with one single bond and three lone pairs and a negative charge. And through the course of this reaction, this building block has been changed to a neutral oxygen with two lone pairs and two single bonds. All of the possible combinations that you'll see in the course of these reactions are going to be in these building blocks tables that you've seen previously. Let's take another look at this reaction, this time with arrows. We have our first arrow start at our electron source. And just like we had for resonance, that electron source is going to be an electron-rich part in our reaction mixture. This case is going to be our O-. minus oxygen with a negative charge. That negative charge shows a surplus of electrons. And that negative charge is going to be our source. So we can push those electrons, have the tail of our arrow here, push through, and attack something. In this case, what gets attacked in this proton transfer reaction is the hydrogen on our phenol. Now the electrons that get moved in the second part of this reaction are going to be the electrons between our oxygen on phenol and our hydrogen. Those two electrons that used to be shared between our oxygen and hydrogen now get completely localized onto our oxygen. And this is going to be our electron sink. Our electron sink tends to be either an empty orbital, an atom-centered orbital, our A, as we've seen previously, or an electronegative atom that can hold those electrons, such as this oxygen. So as we draw these two arrows, they combine to form this phenolate with an O negative charge here, and then water. In this case, we have pushed our electrons using our curved arrow notation. Notice as well that we never even touched the other part of our phenol group through the course of our reaction. We never even touched any of these benzene carbons or hydrogens, so therefore they all remain in exactly the same place in our final structure. Now the way that we're going to describe this reaction and all other future elementary steps is with our orbitals. This reaction, this proton transfer reaction, is an N to sigma star sigma type interaction. We have our non-bonding lone pair on our hydroxide coming in and attacking the sigma star of our oxygen and hydrogen. Notice this coaxial arrangement, this sigma type arrangement of our arrows here. This arrow must go into the sigma star orbital of our OH because we're breaking that OH sigma bond that empty sigma star gets populated by our filled N. So our HOMO, our nucleophile, that OH minus, the hydroxide, is going to be attacking our LUMO, our empty sigma star, our OH bond. We symbolize our proton transfer step with this bracket PT. PT stands for proton transfer, and you'll see this notation several times throughout this course. The new sigma bond that got formed here was our OH between our hydroxide and our hydrogen. Whenever we introduce a new elementary step, we will be concerned with our orbitals because our orbitals are what designate the stereochemistry and also the reactivity for all of our molecules. So whenever we introduce a new elementary step, you will see this orbital picture. So be sure that you understand, and not just memorize, the orbitals involved in this reaction.